Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today, I am super excited to finally be trying the brand Art and Fable. I've always just really loved their puzzles ever since I saw them and they've just been on my wish list for the longest time ever. Um, they just create like some really beautiful art puzzles as the name kind of suggests. And as I was reading about them, I sort of learned that one of their goals is to just get people to be able to like interact and engage more with sort of more classic style art, um, you know, particularly like painting and that sort of thing. Um, and one of the other things that Art and Fable are really well known for is they have great quality, but also they use this term to describe their pieces as like a velvet touch surface. And I've always been really intrigued about that. I'm very curious to know what, like, what does that actually feel like? Does it feel like velvet? Like, what do they mean by that? So yeah, I'm really curious to find that out. And then one of the other things I discovered about the brand is that they donate some of their profits to a range of different organizations and charities that they sort of feel strongly about. So yeah, I just think that's really awesome. So the puzzle that I've chosen to do today is this absolutely beautiful and extremely detailed Mantis Mundi puzzle by the artist Robert Stephen Connett. Uh, they also have another very similar 500 piece one by Art and Fable as well, which I'm definitely keen to get a hold of. Um, but yeah, I just chose this puzzle because I just was really drawn to this gorgeous, very hyper detailed artwork. It basically features, uh, it's like this scene that features uh, like lots of different insects and creatures and critters and plants. It's yeah, it's really beautiful. And it's more of a muted palette, like a lot of greens and browns and things. Um, but yeah, there's just so much detail and like light and dark just packed in there. Um, so some of the things that are in here are like beautiful butterflies and caterpillars, um, beetles, wasps, um, dragonflies. And then, you know, you've got all these different types of ferns and other little plants. And then, you know, you've also got like lizards and some other funny little critters in the water. And what's interesting about this artist's work is everything's quite realistic but then some of the creatures have quite unusual kind of quirky uh almost creepy sometimes facial features that make them look a bit human or alien so they don't always quite look like the real thing they look a bit different some of them so i always find that quite interesting um but also kind of fun so yeah so i'm really excited to put this together but first we will have a quick look at the packaging and do the unboxing. Of course, we're gonna check out the pieces and discover what this velvet touch surface is all about. And yeah, and then I'll get into puzzling and we'll have a chat and do final thoughts. So let's unbox this beautiful puzzle. Let's take a look at the box and the information and images on it. So actually the first thing I notice about the box is the feel of it. So it's got a very kind of almost I guess velvety silicone feel. I've definitely felt that on a few other puzzles I own, but yeah, it definitely has a very, to me, like a luxurious, very nice feel. So, and the box is really sturdy and yeah, just kind of a normal size puzzle box really. Like it's not overly thin or thick. Um, you know, it's definitely smaller than like a Ravensburger box, but yeah, it's a nice size. Like it kind of feels like a classic puzzle box, I guess. So on the front, we've got, of course, the image and 1000 here and high quality print included inside. So that's cool. And we've got the logo Art and Fable Puzzle Company here and a little puzzle piece. And then we've got the name and artist. And up here um, is like a little, I guess, sort of sticker. It says jigsaw puzzles with a luxurious velvet touch surface. Uh, puzzles never felt so good, um, which th this was actually in shrink wrap, which actually had the same like sort of sticker on top of the shrink wrap as well. Um, and then the sides, what have we got here? <sighs> okay, this one again, just has like the logo, part of the image, not like the whole thing, little piece count. It's got a lovely little border detail as well. And then it actually has a symbol up here that says made in Europe with the sort of European blue and gold stars on there. And then this side has just kind of the boring information, I guess. The barcode, sort of like choking hazard info. 
a QR code, which I haven't checked where that goes, but I'm assuming it's like the website or something. And then sort of like the recycling kind of logos. Um, and then these other two sides are basically similar to the other side. So we've got here the name of the puzzle and the artist, the a small little logo of Art and Fable. Again, just part of the image, this sort of jigsaw piece and this ornate border. And that's pretty much replicated on this short side as well, except this one has like the piece count. It also says designed in the USA and made in Poland. So it's interesting and has the logo, the puzzle name, the artist name, um, has a puzzle number. Um, and then it actually has the size in centimeters, interestingly, since it's designed in the US, which I find interesting. Maybe it's because it's, they're trying to be appeal to maybe a more international audience with sort of the like artworks and things like that. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, the size is 68 centimeters by 48 centimeters. I'll also pop the equivalent in inches up on the screen. So then let's look at the back. So the back's got a lot of information as well. We've again got the name of the puzzle and the artist and it actually has a blurb about the artist, which is really nice. I do quite enjoy when puzzle companies like just include information about who the artist is. So yeah, definitely, obviously that's a real focus with Art and Fable puzzles. And they've actually got the whole image down here in a little box. And then in the middle, it says 1000 pieces Three bonus items puzzlers will love. So each box contains a collectible frameable, frameable print to enjoy while puzzling and long after. So that's cool. Resealable bag and a handy box top stand. So to look, you know, hold up your box lid while you're puzzling. So that's cool. And then it actually says donations from the sale of this puzzle will go to the Amazon conservation team. And then has a little blurb in there, um, details. And then, oh, actually on the back here, it's got the puzzle dimensions in both centimeters and inches. So inches is 26.7 inches by 18.9 inches. And then in this column here, we've just got, I guess, more sort of information about Art and Fable as a puzzle company. So uh, premium quality jigsaw puzzles made from imaginative and beautiful art and then inspired designs, perfect fit, traditional piece shapes. So it says interlocking European style piece shapes make even the most challenging puzzles fun. You can sort by shape, not just by color. So that sounds good to me. And no puzzle glare, that also sounds good. And then just at the bottom, it has a bit of info about the company. So yeah, we got quite a lot of information packed on this box, but you know, it's good. It's all very like useful and interesting information. So let's open it up, maybe, oh no. There we go. All right, so the inside of the box is just sort of plain cardboard. And then, okay, it looks like our pieces, well, they look pretty nice, come in a, I guess, non-reusable um, plastic bag, although it does have this sort of, one of the little recycling symbols on, so maybe you can recycle it as like a soft plastic. Um, so we've got that there. Then we've got, this little card here, which is actually the box top stand. So you um, you pop out part of it and then that like just holds the lid in place, I believe. And it also has like a silicone-y velvety feel to it too, just like the box. So that's kind of makes it feel like a bit more interesting than just a piece of cardboard, but yeah, that's cool. And then what have we got here? Okay, oh, so this is the Wow, okay, that's a bit different. This is the beautiful, like, I guess, reference picture, but also um, they said you can sort of like frame and keep it. And I can see why, because it's actually printed like on this quite sturdy, like piece of cardboard. And then on the back, it's got, uh, again, like information about the artist and also about the, the Amazon conservation team, which they're donating to. So yeah, it's kind of nice that they include that and that you get this really nice, sort of quality, sturdy artwork essentially that, yeah, you can literally frame. So yeah, really nice. I think that's, I've never really quite seen anything like that. So I think that's a really nice inclusion. And actually this image has that sort of same feel as the box stand and also the lid, like it's that velvety, silicony feel. So yeah, really interesting. 
Um, everything definitely feels quite luxurious. And then they include one of my favorite things ever, ta -da, a uh, brand new uh, Ziploc bag. So you, when you've like done with the puzzle and you want to pack it up or you want to keep the pieces safe, you can transfer them from this to this. I kind of still have mixed feelings about that. Like I've seen that in a couple of other puzzles and I always feel like it's a shame that I, I guess it's something to do with their manufacturing process that they just can't automate being able to put puzzle pieces into like a resealable bag, um, which is why they always end up in like a non reusable bag. So it always feels, it's a bit of a pity that we have like two lots of plastic bags going on here. It'd be nice if the pieces could just go straight into like this, but it must be something to do with manufacturing. So, and I've seen that also even with like fabric bags in puzzles where the puzzle pieces will still come in a plastic bag, but then you get like the fabric bag included to put the pieces in later yourself. So yeah, so I think it just must be something to do with that. Um, but at least they include a nice reusable bag for you to use later, so that's cool. And then the inside of the box is just empty, but we do have a bit of stuff around the edges. So we've got the little logo on each end here. And then on this side facing me, it says puzzle for good. In addition to making great puzzles and supporting great artists, it is our mission to give back with every puzzle sold. Through your puzzle purchase, you are supporting the work of a charitable organization. Check our website to see the charities we support. And then on this side, it says our puzzles are earth friendly. We love that our paper jigsaw puzzles tread lightly on the earth. Um, art, all art and fable merchandise is made from recycled paper content. The puzzle box and insert are all fully recyclable. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, so that's everything included. So yeah, in a sec, let's open this up and have a look at the pieces. I've emptied out the pieces so we can have a sort of closer feel and look at them. Um, so, I guess let's talk about this velvet touch surface. So I shouldn't be surprised, but it is actually the same feeling as everything else. So the same as the box and this like print and the box lid stand. It's that sort of like, yeah, like a that really soft silicony kind of feel. So I've only ever really felt this in one other puzzle before and this was an old Gibson's puzzle. So all the new Gibson's puzzles seem to just have normal, like a cardboard top, but one of the old ones that came in a blue box, I don't know if their blue box puzzles still are like this, had a very like this feel. Um, it is it is different to the Cloudberries one. So I know some of you who have done Cloudberries know that kind of waxy feeling. It's similar, but it's different. This is definitely smoother. This is definitely very like soft. It's not as waxy. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the best way I can describe it is like a yeah, very soft silicony kind of. Like that's, that's the best way I can describe it. Like to me, it doesn't exactly feel like velvet, but it feels very soft and it feels nice to touch. Like you definitely want to touch it. Um, it has a very matte feeling, but um, yeah, like it's still smooth and soft. Um, yeah, I, that's sort of the best thing that comes to mind to describe this. If anyone else has done an art and fable, please feel free in the comments below to, you know, describe it in another way that you think better kind of explains how the pieces feel. But yeah, it's definitely quite unusual. I haven't really seen many other puzzle companies that sort of use this kind of like surface on their puzzle pieces but yeah um so far i definitely really like it i love the feel of the box and this it's a very luxurious feel and yeah i like it i don't know if everyone would um if you don't like that sort of velvety silicony feel you just might li not like it at all but i really like it um so apart from that the pieces themselves um kind of like the back of the box explained like sort of traditional european cut i guess i think that's what it sort of said the pieces are like fairly, I guess, traditional or standard cut. Like they have multiple piece shapes, but nothing like weird and unusual. So uh, I'll just pull out a few different ones, I guess, and we can have a look. Um, so of course we've got edge pieces, um, but we've got here, you know, I don't know if, uh, we've got like a 
you know, pieces with three tabs on them. Um, another one of three because I accidentally pulled that out. Oh, here we go. Let's move that. We've got one with four tabs and we've got one with like, I guess the zero tabs or like more the inserts, you know, one tab, two tabs. I'm calling them tabs, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> but you, I think you get what I mean. So yeah, we definitely have like a variety of piece shapes, but they're all like quite traditional piece shapes. Um, yeah. And I guess let's look at like a sort of individual piece. Actually, one thing I have noticed is there are a few, well, a couple pieces that are a little bit damaged. So unfortunately, like this, uh, this piece here, I just noticed the, some of the cardboard is just peeling off the back a little bit. So yeah, I might have to, I mean, damage happens in all sorts of like puzzles, you know, both like, uh, lower price point, higher price point. That's sort the of thing. It just, it just happens. Um, but hopefully, you know, there isn't too much in here. Um, for the most part, everything looks really nice. Um, and I haven't seen any like damage to the top surface at all. So, but we'll see how we go. Um, anyway, let's, I guess, grab a piece. And that's the other thing, <laughs> like a lot of puzzles, some of the pieces get wedged together. Like, so they're not, they're cut properly. They're just, these pieces don't even go together. They're just getting, the tabs are getting stuck into each other. But anyway, so we've got here a lovely, um, like, I guess it's a gray board backing. So yeah, just nice cardboard, which I like. It doesn't have any of that extra paper. So yeah, it's just very nice and simple on the back. Very nice gray board. And then the thickness is just a, it's not super chunky, but it's a, it seems like a nice medium thickness. Um, I don't want to bend it too much. My, my very pretty art and fable puzzle. I'm sure like if I, you really put in effort, you could bend it, but for the most part, like in general, when I try and just bend it gently, the piece itself feels pretty sturdy. Um, might depend on the piece shape, but yeah, this, this 4.1 feels quite strong. feels pretty sturdy. So yeah, even though it's like a medium sort of thickness, it feels very strong. So that's good and very like, I don't know. Yeah, just a nice piece. <laughs> and then of course on the top, we have this very beautiful um, velvet touch surface, I guess. And it's, yeah, it's very matte. There's no glare at all actually. So when I, you know, shine, like move it around, I don't really get any light shining on it. Not even really a little bit, like it's really matte. So I really like that. Um, so that should make puzzling, especially like a really detailed image like this, a lot easier. So I'm really glad about that. And yeah, of course that nice soft sort of silicony feel. Um, yeah, not, uh, not much else to say, I guess. Yeah, from what I can see, like this piece is one of these little kind of red berry type plants and yeah, the colors seem to match and the detail on the piece looks very crisp and clear, uh, no, not at all pixelated. Yeah, I can definitely see a lot of detail in this piece. So yeah, the printing looks really nice. Um, I guess, oh, I guess puzzle dust, that might be the only other thing. Um, just looking at the empty bag of there, there wasn't a lot of puzzle dust in it. My fingers do feel a little bit dusty from handling the pieces. But if I look in the bottom of the box, dig, dig. Um, yeah, I'm not really seeing any chunks of dust or anything. I think it's more just a general, like fine kind of puzzle dust. But so I, you know, I don't know if it's gonna pose much of a problem, but I mean, there's a tiny bit of dust in the very bottom, but it's very minimal. So yeah. Um, so in a sec, I think we will get into puzzling. Um, let's quickly talk about my approach. Uh, I, I'm feeling slightly apprehensive because this definitely looks like a difficult puzzle. Um, but I think I am definitely going to pull out border or edge pieces because I think there's like, well, I mean, hang on, let's, before I say that. Okay. Yes this is an edge piece and there's definitely no like extra white border or anything. I, I have definitely fallen into that trap before. I thought the uh, edge pieces would be where the image ends and there's actually like a border, but no, it definitely seems like uh, these edge pieces end where the image ends, if you know what I mean. So 
yeah, I think doing the border could be a good uh, way to approach it by doing that first, because then we sort of um, like set up a bit of structure and then I have a bit more of an idea where some things go. Um, and then I was thinking like some, uh, some of the things that really stand out in this image to me are like this very yellow and red moth or butterfly. I think it's a moth. And also these sort of like reddy yellow berry type plants. So I might try and pull out some of the more distinct colors and patterns like that. Um, maybe even some of the yeah, other like yellow and black ones and maybe even the more brighter greens or this like brighter brown. Um, there's even like some aqua. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I think it's going to be tricky and it might have to be a bit more of a intuitive process where I just see what feels right or what I tend to notice in the pieces and pull those out. Um, but yeah, I think like, I mean, when I look at the box, I can definitely see like certain things standing out. Like this like fern here really stands out because it has quite a dark background behind it and it looks quite bright. So yeah, I think that's a reasonable approach. Um, I also think this might be the sort of puzzle where I tend to look at the image uh, reference picture quite a lot as well. Um, I think that's just the nature of like very detailed puzzle images. You do have to keep like checking back. So I can definitely see myself doing that. Um, but yeah, so I think we, that's enough chatter. Let's Let's get into puzzling.
I'm back and so far I've been really enjoying this puzzle and this sort of puzzling experience. Um, I really love how the artworks are just, just coming together. There's just so much like uh, amazing details in it and just, yeah, it's really intricate and I'm noticing like more and more things as I've been like putting it together. Uh, for instance, what I thought were little berries, like, you know, or little round parts of like a plant are actually like the, uh, these insects sort of bursting forth out of these plants. So if you're a bit squeamish with insects and bugs, you may not like this puzzle. Um, but to be honest, I really, I still think it looks really beautiful. It's, it's not really gross or anything to me. It actually, everything's very colorful and very pretty and the textures are lovely. Um, yeah, just, I really love it. It's, it's just really gorgeous. And to get to this point, including sorting has taken a while. It's taken pretty much exactly five hours. Um, so it's definitely been a trickier, kind of uh, more on the difficult side of things doing this puzzle, um, just because like of all the tiny details and a lot of like greens and like browns and reddy bits, like these red sections were quite tricky to put together. Um, yeah, but you know, I still feel good about sort of where I'm at. I sort of think I'm probably halfway, maybe a little bit more. I'm not too sure how long it's gonna to take to do the remainder of this. I sort of feel it'll probably take less than five hours because um, I did start sort of getting faster and more familiar with the puzzle as a whole as like time went on. So I sort of feel like, you know, hopefully I can get this done in maybe two or three hours. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, but you know, it doesn't really matter as long as I'm having fun doing it, I guess. So in terms of quality, uh, yeah, I have to say I've really enjoyed this puzzling experience. Um, for a start, I love the velvet touch or the sort of silicon feel to the pieces. It's just really smooth and nice. Um, it does make sorting somewhat a little bit more difficult because the pieces do tend to like, uh, like not fall smoothly over each other like they they grip a little bit so sometimes like pieces yeah almost get a little bit stuck on top of each other like they you can't just easily run your hand through them all like well you can but sometimes the pieces will cling to each other a little bit um, it's, it's really subtle but I guess if you've ever done an ebu that's like the other extreme where the pieces are so slippery because of the glossiness so it's sort of like yeah, this is the other end of that. Um, but for me, it's really not a problem at all. I just thought I'd mention it, sort of something interesting. Um, but, but yeah, I really like the velvet touch. And as for piece fit, I think the pieces fit really nicely together. I had a couple of sort of, I guess, misplaced pieces where I just put something in the wrong spot where it almost fit, but then I realized straight away it just didn't go there. Um, but I, I don't think I'd really consider that false fits because I didn't have anything um, where I was like sort of tricked into having it in the wrong section for like a long period of time or anything like that. I think it was just a couple of misplaced pieces. Um, but yeah, it only, only happened like once or twice and really didn't bother me. Um, and then I believe the packaging said, mentioned that you could like pick up sections. And I think for the most part, that's true. Like, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, so you can pick up sections like this piece down here is a little loose, like it you know, sometimes uh, pieces will fall off the section you're picking up, but for the most part, like the rest of it will stay together. So I think it, like, yeah, the sort of pick up ability is pretty good. Um, you know, you're able to like build sections in front of you and then pick them up and move them pretty easily without too much hassle. So yeah, I guess I'd agree with that, that statement. Um, I don't know if you could do a puzzle pick up, like, you probably could. I don't know if I will, um, but I, I think you probably could. Uh, it does seem like the pieces are holding together pretty well. Um, but yeah, so definitely the fit is nice because of the uh, variation in the piece shapes and also just like it's a very comfortable fit. It's not too tired. It's not too loose, that sort of thing. So yeah, very happy with that. Um, something else I sort of forgot to mention is related to the velvet touch because of that sort of surface the pieces are really matte so there hasn't been any glare at all like none whatsoever um, and that's been really helpful especially doing a puzzle like this it has so much detail and 
color variations so you really need to be able to see the puzzle really well and I think having like the, that really matte finish is just so helpful when doing something like this so yeah really pleased about that and then in terms of puzzle dust it, there really hasn't been any like there's a few specks and my hand I did have to wash my hands after working on the puzzle they were a bit like that sort of dusty but I haven't been sneezing at all and yeah I really like the puzzle board is very clean looking so yeah very pleased with that um, so I think for me the only real con that I've had so far is there have been a few little damaged pieces here and there like nothing major it's usually just been like tabs on the pieces that have been a little bent um, or the cardboard's been a little bit splayed something like that um, or a corner's been a little bent so it does seem like the pieces can bend or get a little bit damaged um, like I guess if they're they get wedged together or things like that so just something to look out for it's not been a huge deal like there's been probably a handful of damaged pieces but like I said it, they've been very it's very minor damage definitely nothing um, nothing I'd really worry too much about and uh, like I said earlier like you get that sort of damage in all sorts of puzzles so yeah but that's probably for me just the only real con I guess but I don't know if it can really be avoided to be honest um, so yeah uh, to sum up I've yeah just really enjoyed both the artwork and the piece quality I think it's really fantastic and I'm really looking forward to continuing continuing on with this puzzle but before I do you might be wondering why I have these two puzzle boxes here so I did mention earlier that I thought that this sort of older Gibson's puzzle had similar pieces so this is I'm um, like uh, I don't know it's a blue box Gibson's puzzle like so uh, you might have seen my recent Gibson's video and all of those were like called white label um, but on the website you can still get these sort of slightly bigger blue boxes um, this one's called pore drops and sugar mice so I got this like a good couple of years ago maybe two three years ago um, so I'm not sure if the blue box puzzles they have on their website still have the same pieces as this one but um, yeah so the reason why I got this one out is because I remembered that the piece had like an interesting coating but I couldn't quite remember what it was but it does turn out that it is different to this it does have a coating but it's more waxy it's actually very similar to the cloudberries one um, so yeah if you yeah if you've done the cloudberries this feels very similar um, it's still a bit different but more like that it's sort of more waxy and has more of a grip when you run your hand across it like almost a little bit sticky grippy whereas the velvet touch is a lot smoother and it's not really waxy it's more like silicon so they are different um, but I just thought it was interesting to sort of compare the two since it was sort of on my mind so I'll move that one out of the way but um, however I did recently get this puzzle which is by the brand I believe it's yeah water and wines which I think is a Swedish company this is the Scotland whiskey puzzle um, I'm actually gonna be working on it this week so you'll see it up on Instagram soon but when this when I got this I realized that um, it's also got that sort of silicon feel to the box which is like the same as the art and fable box so I was like hmm so I decided to open it up and check the pieces and yeah they are pretty much well as far as I can tell they're exactly the same as uh, like the art and fable pieces like if I was blindfolded I wouldn't be able to tell which is which they even look the same they seem to be the same thickness um, yeah so exactly the same velvet touch so that's really interesting and I suspect they're made by the same manufacturer because our art and fable puzzle says it's made in Poland and on the bottom of this box it says made in EU but then it says printed by Treffle factory uh, it's got the address and it says Poland so yeah I wonder if they're both made by the same manufacturer they could be um, that's my suspicion but I guess what that means is if you've done one or the other you will probably like the other one because it's basically the same so I mean I haven't put this one together yet so I don't know what the fits like but judging by the piece shape and sort of thickness and everything it looks like it's the same sort of like piece variation as this art and fable one so yeah I would 
it's probably pretty safe to say it's going to sort of fit together in a very similar way, if not the same. Um, yeah, so there you go. If you like this brand and you haven't tried this or vice versa, you probably like it. So yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. I always find it quite fun and interesting to sort of see what other puzzles certain brands are like. And, you know, I mean, I've done so many that, you know, I can't sort of help but compare them and like draw similarities. So, but I just find it interesting. So anyway, enough chatting. Um, I think it's time to get back into this gorgeous puzzle and finish putting it together. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get into puzzling it and then I will come back with final thoughts about the puzzling experience and the Art and Fable brand. I've finished this beautiful Mantis Mundi puzzle and I just absolutely love how it's turned out. I think it just both looks and feels amazing. Um, it's actually a much brighter and way more like popping and detailed puzzle than I first thought. I think I just sort of thought because the color palette is a lot of sort of greens and browns and more uh, muted tones that it would be quite a dark puzzle to do, but actually the way the artist has just sort of painted so much like light and shadow into it really makes all the like different critters really like stand out and pop and makes the leaves sort of come alive. It almost looks a little bit 3D in some respects. But yeah, it's just a stunning image, so much detail. I really enjoyed like as I put it together, just finding all the extra, extra cute little details that I initially missed. Um, yeah, it's just such a cool and really quite a unique and interesting image, I thought. Um, and as for the time, uh, this last puzzling session took two hours and 10 minutes. So all up from sorting to the end, it took seven hours and 10 minutes, which actually surprised me a little bit. I thought it would take longer since it's like a bit more of a, like very detailed and I thought it was gonna be a really tricky puzzle. And there were definitely tricky parts to it, but I think as I got going, um, I definitely grew like more and more familiar with where different things went in the puzzle. Like I could look at a piece and then be like, oh, that's part of this section or whatever. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, it just got faster towards the end. So yeah, really happy with um, my overall experience. So yeah, in terms of uh, the quality, um, yeah, I don't really have anything bad at all to say. I 
love how it feels. I keep walking past it and running my fingers over it because I've just sort of become so addicted to like this sort of velvety silicon feel. I really like it. And yeah, I found that the pieces just fit really nicely together. I didn't have any more issues with uh, pieces fitting in the wrong place at all. So I, I would say there weren't really any false fits. So things just fit really nicely. Um, and it's a very comfortable fit. Um, sections hold together reasonably well and it's not too loose or too tight. So yeah, I think like you can definitely, you could probably do a puzzle pickup. So yeah, you can definitely pick it up without things falling apart too much. So that's really good. And yeah, I love that like because of the this sort of, I guess, velvet touch finish, it really makes the puzzle extremely matte. And I really love that. There's like no sheen at all. And it just made this puzzling like this particular image just like a breeze really. So yeah, really love that. Um, definitely one of my favorite uh, features of the quality. And yeah, there just really was very uh, minimal puzzle dust. So very pleased about that. Um, yeah, so I think the only real con that I had was that there were, you know, a handful of pieces in this puzzle that were a little, like had minor damage. So whether it's just a little bent edge or a bent tab or a little bit of splaying on one of the tabs. Like if I run my hand over the puzzle, there's definitely, yeah, like I can feel a few little bits where one of like the tab has sort of is a bit raised because it's a little bit bent up or something like that. So um, that's probably something I could fix with glue or as long as I'm careful with the puzzle, it's probably not gonna get any worse. So I'm not too bothered by that. Um, at least I'm aware of it and I know to like look after my puzzle, which I do anyway. Um, and to be honest, yeah, I'm not too bothered by it. I mean, obviously I would love a perfect puzzle, but I don't think that's necessarily realistic because uh, you know, no matter what the puzzle brand is, they can be, puzzle pieces can be prone to just getting damaged in the box or in transport or even in manufacturing. So, you know, it happens unfortunately, but um, yeah, like I said, I don't, it's, a, it's only a minor con for me. It's not like, there's not, it's not major damage. So I'm not too, too bothered. Um, so let's talk price. So these are definitely high-end puzzles. And here in Australia, the 1000 piece size sort of retails approximately, approximately uh, for 50 Australian dollars. So I'll pop the US equivalent on the screen. And that's definitely like a uh, more, I guess, high-end price, but by no means the highest price. Like I've definitely seen other puzzle brands out there trying to sell puzzles for 60, sometimes even $70. So yeah, it's, you know, it's up there, but it's definitely not the highest. Um, but I think, you know, for that price, you're actually getting a really beautiful puzzling experience, both in terms of the range of like beautiful art images that Art and Fable have, but also just this beautiful like feel of the pieces and the overall just presentation and quality. Like the packaging is really beautiful. There's so much information included about the artist and the organization that they choose to donate to and you know and also just uh like you know you get little extras in the box as well like the the uh box lid holder and like the extra uh ziploc bag and things like that so you know it you get quite a lot included and yeah and obviously a beautiful and really wonderfully well-made puzzle i guess so i guess the question is would i recommend art and fable puzzles and i would say absolutely i just really enjoyed my experience doing this one. I don't know why I waited so long to do them because I'm really in love with like this brand now. I can see myself doing a whole lot more in the near future. Um, and yeah, I'm really keen to also get a hold of the 500 piece um, puzzle by the same artist. So that's also another beautiful design that I've got my eye on. So yeah, really, yeah, really happy with this brand and very happy to recommend it. I totally see what all the hype and fuss is about now. So I guess in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this puzzle. Uh, do you like, uh, you know, puzzles with little critters on or are you a bit squeamish? Um, I personally, I'm not a fan of the couple of spiders hiding in it, but the overall image is just so beautiful that, you know, I can't say no. And yeah, I guess, let me know if you've done art and fable puzzles yourself. And if so, like what were some of your favorite uh, images? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you show that like button some love 
And if you want to see more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also going to be helping this channel grow. And you can also find me over at Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.